I'm Claire and I'm here at Frank Nutt's Sewing Machines and I'm looking at the new Benina 475 Quilters Edition. Here it is. What do you think? It's rather lovely, isn't it? Got a really nice white frontage. Dials to fiddle about with. Turn the uh, stitch length and width, alter them that way. So let's have a go with free machining. So I'm going to take this normal foot off because what I want to put on is a free motion embroidery foot. Now this foot doesn't come with this machine uh, and if you already have one on certain models it will fit this machine. So I've got the foot 24 open toed free machine embroidery foot and I'm going to just pop that on. Usual lovely Benina foot changing system, you just literally put it on there and it just attaches really easily. I want to get rid of these teeth and to lower the teeth on this machine it's a case of pressing the button on the side. So there we go. And I need to wind a bobbin. And the other good thing about this machine is it comes with these big big bobbins. So it holds an awful lot of thread. So let's get one of those wound. So you, what you'll see on the bobbin is that it has little silver markings on one side and not the other. And when you put the bobbin on you actually place it down on here silver side down. So I'm going to pop some Madeira Classic 40 thread in. So I need to go there, under there, round there, making sure it's in that tensioning mechanism. And what I'm going to do, I like to wind my bobbins. I always like to put them through the hole like that, hold on to the thread. And then if I just push that over, hold the thread like that, and what will happen is that snaps and you get this really nice neat bobbin, it means you can sew right to the end. I'll only need a little bit, so that's plenty, but nice and smooth. So I'm going to thread the machine now, so it still needs to go under there, and you just come down round there, oh sorry, one thing I should have done first is make sure the needle's in the highest position. Oops, what am I doing? Pressing all the wrong buttons. There we go. So we go under there, down here, up here, and then this is slightly different. So uh, it's the same as my 590, but if you've got an older Benina, you'll notice there is a bit of a difference here. And you just need to make sure that you go backwards and then forwards and it clicks into place. So that's something that I personally have had to get used to on my 590. So it's fine for me, but just to let you be aware. And so the same threading like that, and then bring the needle threader down, firm push, that swings round, place in between the little sort of fork at the end, and as you let go of your left hand, you let go of your right hand, and you've got it threaded. And then I just do that and pull that backwards. So that's all good. Nice clear table, that just slides off, and I'm going to pop that in there. So this is the bobbin case, and you need to just press that side there to release it. Oops, there we go. Now, again, I'm used to this bobbin case now, but if you've got an older style bobbin case, you just have to remember that it's a bit different. Again, you can only put the bobbin in one way and it's silver side in. So the thread is actually pointing to the left and that is the correct way. On the old Benina bobbin cases we would put it in that way around so there we go. It's just a little bit of difference that's all and you just pop it through there, pull it round and then it's underneath there, firm pull and it just goes in there. And then when you pop it in here don't do what I did the first time when I had my 590. I press that and it kind of releases it. So you have to pop it in and then push it with this side. Slots in nice and easily. Little cutter. And there we go. So I'm going to put the table back on and see what happens when I free machine embroider. Oops. So we're on straight stitch. So I know that because that's selected. If I wanted zigzag, it would be that one. So again, because I'm doing free machine embroidery, it doesn't matter what my stitch length is because I'm determining my stitch length by how fast I move my hoop and how fast I go with my foot. So I'm gonna pop some calico in a hoop. 
a good idea if you're using a single layer of fabric to pop it in a hoop and then you've got this nice tight canvas so um, placing the inner hoop over the outer hoop push, pulling my calico up at right angles so that my inner hoop doesn't flip out tighten it up a bit and we're ready to go okay now I do always like to bring my bobbin thread up before I start and the one thing that I've had to get used to on this machine is that you have to lower the presser foot before you can pop your needle in so needle in needle up and that brings up your bobbin thread you can then pop your needle back in the fabric my presser foot is already down so I'm ready to go so let's have a look see what it's like so I'm going to set off oh listen to that lovely and smooth now that's sewing rather lovely and even when I'm going around in circles it's not whipping up the bobbin thread too much I mean you can see a few stitches now I personally quite like that but if you wanted to make sure that you couldn't see that you could alter the tension it's sewing rather beautifully though look at that so what else can we do Now the other lovely thing about this is it's got a thread cutter. So if you want to go elsewhere in your hoop, just press the thread cutter, cuts it top and bottom, off you go to wherever you want to be. Oops, let me just cut that end off. Pop your needle back in. In theory, I should be able to just start again. Let's see if that goes. Look at that. Oh, that's gonna save so much time. If you're doing lots of sewing in a hoop, or if you're doing lots of raw edge applique you can get doing it quite quickly listen that's beautiful Go around again so smooth so that's the straight stitch let's see what we're like on a zigzag. I'm just going to do a leaf. I'm going to set it to zigzag so that's number two and I'm going to alter the width of the zigzag so let's have a look. I want it, um, what am I doing? Going down? Yeah, I want it narrower. So let's have, oops, quite a narrow one and um, we'll do a stem. I'm just going to follow my line and because I'm moving my hoop nice and slowly that's why I'm getting that nice satin stitch oh, so that's rather lovely so I'm just going to cut it and come back down here back to the leaf pop my needle in um, I'm going to go a bit wider actually let's go a bit wider and see now I'm on a wider stitch and I can just move it side to side in a sort of haphazard way and that gives us a bit of texture fills in the leaf a bit do a bit of so I'm, I know it's on zigzag but I'm sort of doing it in deliberately like that just to give it a bit of texture it's great fun and then of course like all artists you can always write your name so let's go back to straight stitch and needle back in and see how it is. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, look at that. Bit of fun. <laughs> so there's 
my first go on the Bonina 475. I think you'll agree that's rather lovely. I know this machine does lots of things, but uh, I'm just concentrating on the machine embroidery. So if you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe, you'll obviously catch up with all other videos that we do, especially on this new machine. And uh, yeah, tell us what you think. I think it's rather lovely.